This chapter deals with the problem of interacting with the real world in a purely functional language. While normal Haskell functions have no side effects, reading from and writing to the terminal are side effects. We don't expect to get the same result every time we call such functions. Haskell's solution is to separate the purely functional part of the code from the input and output as much as possible. This is accomplished through the type system. The IO type constructor produces types with an IO action wrapped around a value. These differ from regular values in two ways. First, they can be performed by, for example, evaluating them inside a main function. We'll see an example of this in a moment. Second, special steps are necessary for conversion. Return turns a regular value into an IO action, while a left arrow converts an IO action into a regular value. To explore the wonderful world of I.O., we're going to write a program to play the game of Hangman. Before we start, you'll need to get a list of words to use as a dictionary. A good choice is enable1.txt. You can find it in many places on the web, including here. Enable is the enhanced North American benchmark lexicon, a word list used in some Scrabble games. You might not agree completely about what is or is not a word, but it's as good a list as any, and it's in the public domain. Here's our first draft of Hangman. As usual, I advocate getting one small thing to work before adding fancier features. The main function here just reads in the dictionary and reports how many words it contains. We can run it directly from the command line with run Haskell. The program has one function, main, its body is a do block with several statements. These are carried out in order, much like in an imperative language. The first line within the do calls open file, which returns an IO action wrapped around a file handle. The left arrow here extracts this value and stores it in the variable handle. The second line calls hget contents, which extracts the contents of the associated file into one long string. This is stored in the variable contents. The third line builds a string and then prints it. The fourth line closes the file. Here's the second draft of the program. This one chooses a random word and prints it. The function getStudGen returns a seed for a random number generator wrapped in an I.O. action. This involves I.O. because it looks at some aspect of the outside world, probably the system clock. Lines contents breaks the contents of the file into a list of separate lines. In enable1.txt, each line contains a single word. I mapped init across it to get rid of the last character on each line. I'm not entirely sure why this was necessary, but I suspect it has to do with the way different systems represent new lines. Two characters on a Windows machine, one on a Mac or Linux machine. If you get different behaviors, such as having the last letter of each word fall off, you might remove the mapping. Random R produces a random number in a specified range. It takes two arguments, the range as a pair, and the random seed gen. We have to supply a type annotation because it's also possible to ask for a random boolean, a random float, and so on. Random R returns a pair of values, the random number and the next seed. We don't care about the seed because we only need one random number. It's worth noting that this is the other way to deal with side effects in a purely functional language. Pass the state of things around as an extra argument or return value. This doesn't work for keeping track of the outside world, but it's handy for keeping track of variables. We'll see this trick again in a later draft of this program. Once we have a list of words and an appropriate random number n, we choose the nth word and pass it to play. The third version of Hangman lets us guess letters and tells us whether they're in the word. I'll quit the program with Control D, which sends it an end of file character. We used the function getLine here to read a line of text from the input. There's also a getCare, but this would cause some complications having to do with new lines and buffering. As it is, we have to use head to get the first, and presumably only, letter on the line the user entered. Notice that the handle function is a regular, pure Haskell function. It always does the same thing, given the same input. The fourth version shows us only the letters we've guessed correctly.
The main change is an additional argument to play and handle. The word known so far with unknown letters replaced with underscores. Here's where we initially replace all of the letters. When we guess correctly, we use zip with to combine word and known, taking from word when a letter matches, from known otherwise. The fifth and final version completes the game. To heighten the suspense, we'll look at the program before playing. We've added one more argument to play and handle, the number of guesses left. Handle now returns a pair, the revised value of known and the revised number of guesses. We bind both of these values to names in play just before the recursive call. Ready to try it out? Feel free to enhance the program with an ASCII art gallows. You might write a function that converts a number of guesses into a picture. Be sure to separate the production of this string, which is purely functional, from printing it, which has a side effect. For a real challenge, try implementing Keith Schwartz's Evil Hangman.